Let's start off with trapeze. What inspires you to pick the word trapeze? So I've been doing trapeze for about seven years. Um, I tried it. I thought it was going to be a one-time thing. I thought I'd climb the ladder, do the thing, cross off the list and be finished with it. And I became massively addicted. So I have flown all over the world. We now have a trapeze rig here in Santa Barbara, where I live, how I met my boyfriend. (laughs) Um, And it's a mindfulness practice. It is a meditation. It's also a parallel for life. Uh, because you, you know, you have that thing that you have to do that's a little intimidating, a little scary in life, and you decide you're going to do it, and you climb that ladder, which is taking the first step on that thing that you have to do, and then you get to the top and you hold onto this very heavy bar, which are the obstacles that you have to do that thing you want to do, and you look down and you're really high up, and it's a little scary, uh, and it's higher from up there than it was from down there, um, and then you swing out, you take the jump off that platform, and you, you fly. For your first time jumping off like what was that like i i don't have a problem with heights so that was good um it, it just it feels like you're climbing that ladder forever and the ladder's not overly stable i mean it's attached to the structure but it clanks a little bit um and you get halfway up and you're like boy i'm really out of shape <laughs> <laughs> and and the bar is so much heavier than you think so when they hand it to you it sort of pulls you out a little bit and you really have to do everything in your power to keep yourself from just going face first off this platform. Um, And I remember that first catch, which is the most exciting part because you're being held onto by typically a hot shirtless guy, but you're held onto and you swing out and you're just free. You're weightless for this brief moment. And it is just the most incredible feeling. And as soon as I felt that first catch, I was like, oh crap, I guess I'm doing this thing now. So Wow. wow. It's been a long time. So it's it's an inspiration to me. And when I do coaching, I will sometimes take people to the trapeze rig. Uh, I had a women's retreat where we all did trapeze. And it's, it's interesting because I had these like high powered, very type A, very accomplished driven women who stood up there and screamed and cried. <laughs> and we're like, oh my God, like this tapped into something that I didn't even know I had. Oh my so, God. It's really exciting. I've been uh, bungee jumping before. and it's a little bit different than skydiving because with skydiving, you're attached to a person and they kind of like, all right, we're going like, you know, you got, you don't get to really wait up there. Yeah. No. With, I feel like with both trapeze and bungee jumping, like you're the one who decides to jump off a high cliff, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's giving me the heebie jeebies right now. (laughs) Still. (laughs) Well, but it's just that go do something. It's such a good metaphor though for life. And there's always a net. There's always always a net. You you know, Mm. and when you first start, you're roped in. So there's all these, I mean, just like in life, we have these safety precautions. We have people around us that support us. We have resources, whether it's online or another human. We have, you know, and sometimes I think we forget that we have all these, these precautions in place. Yeah. And at some point we have to take a leap of faith. We have to stare into that abyss and uh and walk off the ledge yeah that is such a good metaphor for life i love it um so your next word is meditation which is i think a word that people will understand a bit more but it was funny well not funny just before the podcast you had tweaked your back i believe doing yoga and you know (laughs) that's related to meditation like Uh how can you recommend yoga and and meditation when when you just got hurt yeah same thing i same way i rep- recommend trapeze when i get hurt i'm definitely more apt to get more hurt on trapeze than i am med- i'm me- definitely meditating <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you mean, like, uh walking meditation you distract you hit a tree i don't know uh here here's the reason i picked the word meditation because this is not an uncommon word um i'm very type a i'm from the east coast I'm a dancer, so I talk fast, I walk fast, my brain goes a mile a minute, and when mm. people told me to meditate, I sucked. I was horrible at it, I couldn't do it, because my mind had all this very important stuff to tell me, right, as it does, um, and I found I started doing my to-do list meditation, so I'd get like two seconds into it and be like, 
oh, I forgot to call that guy back. And I would jump up off the pillow and I thought this was the best thing ever because it, it, my Capricorn brain was like, oh good, it's calmed me down enough to remember to call that guy. So every day I would sit down and do my- <laughs> That thing. hot shirtless guy from the trapeze. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, it was more a client, but yeah, no, I should, yeah, no. Uh, sure, no, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, but it, I loved doing it. And I remember telling people about it. And finally, one woman goes, you know, I don't think that's what meditation is for. <laughs> and I went, oh. Uh, and then I had the privilege of studying at Harvard. And they said that now we we're going to meditate. And I thought, oh, crap, because I'm terrible at it. And I, you know, why do you want to do something that you're going to be bad at or you're going to fail at? But what I realized is no one ever told me how to meditate. No, nobody ever told me why, what the pro- point was, what the purpose was what the benefits could be and once i realized that once i realized that it was mm. simple stillness and in that stillness there was this power of this pause that you could take um and it became one of the things i researched for my dissertation it became something i do every day and it becomes something i teach to other people especially us, us very type a driven folks who believe they can't meditate um and i learned this mini meditation which is simply inhaling i am exhale at peace and it totally changed my life because it it was sort of, <laughs> pardon the vernacular, this gateway drug to formal seated meditation, which I now can do. Maybe not today because my back hurts, but maybe tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so I pick meditation. I love it. There's so much misconception about it and so many people think they can't do it. And I'm a, uh, uh, an example that, yeah, you actually can. You might just have to do it differently. And so you said you uh, were terrible at meditation earlier what makes you feel like you're competent now? I'm sure you still have thoughts. I'm still, you still have the to-do list. Right. We can't say I'm competent, uh, but we can (laughs) say I'm better at it. Uh, You know, that mini, that realization that I don't have to try to blank out my thoughts, that I could do a a visualization, that I can do, that I can make dance class a meditation. Um, Once I realized it didn't have to be this strict, only one way to do it thing, um, then I loosened up a little bit and, and my Capricorn, this is my Capricorn. My Capricorn is very structured, very strict, very, you know, and she wanted me to do it a very specific way. Cause that's how we read that we're supposed to do it. Um, so I let all those other inner people go, well, Hey, maybe we want to play Legos today to do a meditation. Maybe we want to make it a watercolor. Maybe we want to do it during dance class. Maybe it's simply sitting and thinking I am at peace. It doesn't have to be one way. Yeah, I fully agree with you. And it's something that I always tell people like, you just need you just need a little break during the day. You got to be able to relax. Yeah, got to be able to relax. Like in, in, in a genuine way, like, if you're going on a walk, that's great. But if it, if you're walking and you're tensed and you're thinking about all this stuff, I mean, great, go on a walk, but like this ability to relax. Mm-hmm. It was interesting. I studied meditation with um, a gentleman, um, uh, Dan Brown, not the author, the doctor, Dan Brown. And he was talking about daydreaming. And he said, you know, stop daydreaming. And my hand shot up. And I don't think he was taking questions. But I was in like the second row and he looks down and he goes, yes. <laughs> and I said, how can we stop daydreaming? That's when I get my good ideas. Like, what am I going to think about in the shower and when I'm on walks and what, you know? And he said, no, 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 no. You have to think about the future. But when are you thinking about the future? Is it when you're sitting here in class? Is it when you're supposed to be doing something else? Is it while you're making love with your spouse? Is it like, yeah, it's great to think about the future, but is it the appropriate time for it? And I was like, oh, yeah. So now I schedule daydreaming time. You schedule daydreaming time? What time were you daydreaming today? I didn't get to it yet because I did yoga. (laughs) And I tried not to daydream during yoga. You know, it's like, that is not the time to, that is the time for me to go Mm. inside and just be present with myself. It's not the time to think about what I'm making for dinner and how I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons tonight. And, you know, it's not the time for daydreaming. I love Dungeons and Dragons. And certainly when we're playing Dungeons and Dragons, that's not the time to uh, be daydreaming. But in some sense, we're fantasizing. But Totally. Totally. And that also is a parallel for life. Indeed. Yeah. So our next word as well is wine. I love it. I feel like this kind of relates to the relaxation piece, but what do you mean by wine? Yeah, so 
every aspect of wine. So the way wine is made, the, um, the love that goes into that, the fact that it starts from the ground. Uh, if you don't have good soil, you can't have good wine. And then it has to do with you being selective about what grapes you choose and how you make the wine and what kind of barrels you use. I mean, it's such a complicated process from dirt to glass that I don't think people really think about that. And also I do a lot of wine tasting and that's a mindfulness practice. Because if you're truly present with that glass during wine tasting, you're looking at it, you're mm. smelling it, you're tasting it, you're not thinking about other stuff, mm. you're really thinking about the experience with that glass. Mm. And once those bottles are gone, you're never getting that experience back. Yeah, you'll have next year's vintage, but it's going to be a different winemaker or maybe a different rainfall that year. So to me, it's just about this present experience of that thing. I'm, and this has been a common theme from the trapeze, you know, right here in the moment yeah. from meditation. What happened? Like, I feel like your type A personality, you made a big shift, I feel like, at some point in your life. when you, Maybe when you started meditation or maybe like these tendencies to be present moment oriented. Was that always you or was that kind of like a transformation? No. That is definitely not always me. Oh, no, 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 no. And oh. so I'm going to let myself shift into that. Um, I had a really crazy, hectic day the other day, and I ran in, and I grabbed stuff, and I left, and my boyfriend said, hang on a second. Breathe. Let me talk to you. And I said, I don't have time to talk. I got to go. I said, welcome to working. Welcome to working, Kathy Gruber, because I've not been working because of the pandemic. And he goes, how is this different than before? <laughs> and I had to laugh because I was like, yeah, no, I can... I can absolutely get into that rushed, hairy, crazy, like nonstop. I could work 24 hours a day for the next six weeks and not get through my to-do list. That's the Capricorn part of me. Um, and I've realized it's all about balance. It is about sitting at night. I'm in the middle of a juice cleanse, so I'm not having wine. Uh, but it's about sitting and just being present with whatever it is, whether it's the number three bottle of juice that I'm drinking right now in the midst of my fast or being with you. I don't have my phone. I'm not looking at other things. I'm not thinking about what's coming next. I'm just here with you. Um, yeah. And what, what, like examining, like, so what were the beforehand, what was your life like? Were you running around, burning yourself out over stress, not enjoying life? Yeah. I got wasn't, you. I wasn't playing. Um, yeah. And one of the things that trapeze brought was play. I mean, I was doing dance class. I've been dancing since I was three, but even that was a competition. I've got to look great. I've got to burn calories. I got to be fit. I got to, you know, there was this very structured, strict part of myself. Um, and one of the things I teach is ego state optimization. And my Capricorn ego state is this <laughs> very structured, very strict. Productive, get stuff done, effective. And thought I have her. I mean, I have a successful business because of that. I have a high PhD. I write my books. And if she was the only one driving my bus all the time ever, I'd also probably be dead or at least in some loony bin somewhere, you know, because I can't, you can't live like that. So I let my playful kid come in and I let my adventurer come in and I let my romantic girlfriend come in. And, you know, it's like, yeah, it's about aspects of ourselves and who we are putting in charge. What was that word you used? Ego something ego, or other? Yeah. Ego state optimization. So it's this idea that we have these different aspects of ourselves. Of course, I'm very different around my clients than I am the boardroom, that I am my boyfriend, that I am my parents, that I am his parents. Um, so who, what part of ourselves are we bringing forward? Yeah. And if you only have the go, 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 which I feel so many of, I feel like that's the default cultural programming, at least in the United States. It's just the default Yeah, for many people. And you know what it does? It keeps us from feeling. It does. That's been my entire journey is learning how to feel again and being able to relate to the softer side. And I like what you said, the play, the joy, the, the uh, for me, healing, rejuvenation, having fun with life and, and life being worthwhile. Yep. Yeah, that, that productivity side, it, it's, it's so useful. I love how you didn't throw it out the window but that it, it, it needs to be balanced. You said it's all about balanced. I love it. It is all about balance. It's balance in the wine. It's balance on the trapeze. It's balance all, yeah. So I, I, do, I guess I do have a running theme through this. Okay. <laughs> and so the wine was kind of interesting. It was 
I can see how trapeze and meditation related to balance and, and relaxing and so forth. Wine, you were, you, I can see how wine related to relaxation, but it seems like you were kind of taking a different metaphor for life. You were kind of describing what, like an appreciation for the environment and where it came from and the journey. Like, yeah. how, how do we weave that into this conversation? Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, it's all about you have to start with a good base. You have huh. to start with good gr good ground. And I th how many times do we have an idea for something and we jump to the seventh step, not actually building a solid foundation um, and appreciating that thing in the moment? You like, know? do you have an example of this with like, I don't know, your podcast you gets a lot of downloads, you're a coaching client. Do you have a story that can kind of help bring to life like what it means to start out with a good base? Yeah, I mean, my podcast partner and I, we probably had six or seven meetings before we actually started to move forward with something. We just brainstormed and we talked about it. And what do we actually want to do? Yeah, you know what the end result is. If you want Cabernet, you don't plant Chardonnay, you plant Cabernet. But where are you planting it? And when are you pruning it? And where'd you get it? And how long are you going to leave it there? And, you know, it's there's all these choices to make. And it was the same thing with Jason and I when we did our podcast. We got together originally and said, let's do a retreat. Well, then we realized, who the heck knows us? Like, why would people come on a retreat with us? So how can we build an audience? Hey, you know, I've always wanted to do a podcast. Hey, I've always wanted to do a podcast too. And the next thing you know, we built this podcast. Then it was, what the hell's the podcast about? And then it was, well, what do we call the podcast? And I swear to God, we spent two weeks just trying to decide what to call the podcast. Um, should, could we have just jumped on Zoom and started a podcast? Sure, but then we wouldn't have known what the heck we're doing you know and does it more absolutely over time absolutely i'm sure yours is very different than the first day you started it oh yeah but you still had an idea in mind you know so i think so often we either we don't know what we really want and then if you don't know what you want how are you going to get it you don't get in you know you don't get in an uber and say take me somewhere you know where you're going <laughs> yeah. um I feel like these other qualities you're mentioning too of this relaxing, going with the flow, creativity. I feel like that kind of informs that uh, planning, getting a solid base because that productive go, 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 you know, it's great with the plan, but maybe it rushes into things. It just wants to uh, check off the to-do list. It doesn't really care as much about the quality per se or or some of the other um, aspects of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. It's about being discerning. And that comes from knowing what you really want. And that's the first question I ask my coaching clients. What do you actually want? It's an important and then, question. Uh, it, and most people can't answer it. Or they give some vague thing like, I want to be happy. Well, yeah, okay. Tell me, everybody wants to be happy. What does that mean to you? Does that mean successful? Does that mean in a relationship? Does that mean debt free? Does that mean traveling the world 365 days a year? What does happy mean to you? Because to just say, I want to be happy, that's a, that's a cop out. That's Or they tell me what they don't want. I don't want to grieve anymore. I don't want to be sad anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. Okay. What do you want? Mm. I, I love it. I can tell you the qualities I don't want in my wine. <laughs> well, it's also coming up onto our fourth word. It's stress. Your fourth word was stress, but it's stressful. Um, it can be both stressful not knowing what you want, but it could also be stressful. Like it can be stressful not knowing what you want. Yeah. Yeah. I do a lot of work with stress. Stress is incredibly high anyway. It's especially high right now, given everything that's going on in the world. Um, and how do we manage our stress? And I think the key to managing the stress is realizing that stress is not the problem. It's our response to it. It's how we think about it and how we react or respond to it. That's really the issue because if we can't stop any of the stuff out there, if we could, then we would, and it wouldn't be stress. It would just be that other thing. And everyone has a different idea of what stress is, and everyone has a different idea of how they want to handle their stress. So to me, it's a word that <clears throat> almost has a badge of honor now. Oh, I'm so stressed, which means I'm very important. I'm very busy. Look at the list of things I have to do. Um, that's not really what it is. What is, yeah, so stress is, what is stress? Stress is a perception, keyword, that demands are going to exceed our resources. So it's a feeling like things are going to be too big for us to handle. And what are the expectations around stress? For example, 
sometimes I feel like the expectation or, or sort of this uh, notion that stress should go all the way away. What do you have to say about that sort of type of thinking? Like the stre- all stress is bad. I got to make it go away. Um, I don't think all stress is bad. We grow through stress. You figure if you weren't stressing your muscles, you would never get muscles. If you just laid around all day and didn't move, you wouldn't be able to stand anymore. So to that extent, a certain amount of stress is good for us because it actually allows us to evolve, to grow, to be who we are. And I've spoken with so many people who, you know, I say, what got you to this point in your life? And they say, oh my God, it was my cancer diagnosis. It was the best thing that ever happened for me. Or, oh, it was the car accident. Or it was the divorce. Or it was the loss of a child that actually made me more compassionate and made me grow and made me evolve. Crappy things are going to happen to us. We can't stop the stress, Um, but we can stop how we respond to it. And I think it was Thich Nhat Hanh that said, um, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. It was the Dalai Lama, some wise person that wasn't me. Um, Pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Bad stuff's going to happen. How do you respond to it? So how do you respond to it? It's up to you. You can uh, respond in a healthy way to it, or you can react to it. Um, you know, guy cuts you off on the freeway, flips you off. You have a couple choices in that point. You can say, wow, he's really in a rush. I hope everything's okay. Godspeed, God bless, be safe. Or you can be angry and flip him off back and follow him down the freeway and then get to your location and be like, there's this jerk on the freeway. You can carry that around with you all day. Or you can say, wow, I am so sorry. He seems to be in a really bad spot. I hope he's okay. I feel like this is why uh, these meditation practices, and I like the way you use meditation again, which is like taking a break basically, but really like building that mentality and taking a break to relax. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like when you're under stress, it's hard to take a break, right? There's like chemicals in your brain that say this is a big problem that needs to be solved right now. It'd be great if I could take a break. And I'm sure you relate to that as a type A, you know, per, you know, person. How, when someone is locked into that stress cycle and it's so tough to uh, prioritize taking a break, like how do you get – because if you can take a break, then you can respond instead of reacting, right? It's like people get tunnel vision. They get tunnel vision. They're stressed and then their vision – like how, any, any tips or practical wisdom on – on how you can pause, like how you can kind of break that cycle. It's tough work, no doubt. Yeah. It's, it, it, even if it's a breath, mm. even if it's one simple inhale and exhale, because as soon as you send your attention to your breath, it brings you back to the present moment. It anchors you back in your body and it tells your brain, Hey, I'm okay. Because when we get stressed, one of two things happens with our breathing. Either it quickens, right? Because we're going to go fight that bear. Um, or we hold our breath. I hope they don't see me. Oh my God, this is terrible. And then, you know, I mean, I used to work in offices where every once in a while you'd hear from across the cubicle, someone going, you know, and it wasn't really a yawn. It was this gasp for air, like a fish that had fallen out of the fishbowl. That's because they've been holding their breath. Yeah. Uh, the body went, excuse me, you should probably take a breath. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I could do it. You know, um, it's just, Oh, that's so good. Simple things. Um, meditation, mindfulness, exercise, you know, all these things break that cycle of stress. It's about doing a pattern interrupt and stepping out of that Mm. so that you can be present. And one of the good things about both the meditation and the mindfulness is the idea of when thoughts come in, you dismiss them without judgment. It's not like I was thinking again, I'm stupid. This sucks because then you're getting reactive saying, Oh, I was thinking, okay, I'll let that go. Yeah. To respond so that when things do interfere with your homeostasis then you can react uh, you can respond to it rather than react i loved your shift in tonality there <laughs> and what was that that was like oh you're stupid you hear that if you're listening to the podcast you're stupid like sometimes we have a thought and then we have another thought like oh you're so stupid for failing right like oh you didn't do good enough you suck and i think like that that other tone you said oh you you failed okay like you, yeah. you had a thought like um what, what, how do you describe those two tones? What words would you use? Like judgmental versus curious or yeah, harsh versus nice or. Yeah. I mean, all of those, it's totally, when you meditate and be, do mindfulness, it's supposed to be, you know, without judgment. 
and it's supposed to be curious and with a beginner's mind. And I've had so many experience. I'm curious about everything. I want to know about everything. Like there's not a subject that you could start talking about where I wouldn't be like, Oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever. Computer programming, uh, coding, garbage. Res- I mean, like, I don't care what it is to me. Everything's fascinating. And if you look at things like that with that kind of curiosity, not only are you constantly expanding your mind, you're finding more patience, and you're also getting to have experiences that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to have. I love asking people questions. I've gotten free tours at places. I've gotten to go in areas where other people haven't during tours and and excursions and things because I ask questions because I'm seriously curious. The more curious we can be about everything. I mean, let's say you're meditating and a thought comes through. Be curious about that. Well, that's interesting. I was thinking right there. I wonder what that's about. Okay, well, I'll come back to that later. I'm going to go back to my meditation. It's that that curious, that wondering. And then five seconds later when another thought comes in, oh, I'm having another thought. Yeah, interesting. That was a different thought. Okay, well, I'm going to let that one go. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Yeah, and for those listening, this is, I feel such an important thing about meditation is this, you know, I think sometimes we're told to be curious or told to let thoughts in or whatever. I feel like this tone of voice thing that we're kind of touching on is, is really important because that kind of gets the sound of it. Hey, how's it going? You know, yeah. that that easy tone. And then your last word was three words in one. I love it. <laughs> Go for it, which is so interesting because here we are talking about pausing, yeah. right? And getting a firm base and... And then we kind of throw a wrench in the system. We throw, we go, we go the other way, right? Yin and yang, yin and yang, like go for it. So what do you mean by that? And how do you put it in context of pausing, relaxing, et cetera? Yeah. So go for it has been my, um, sort of my theme since high school. I don't know why I've always been an adrenaline junkie. I've always been adventurous. And I think it's that endless curiosity too. Um, go for it is that climbing that ladder and doing that trapeze thing. It's, it's taking a step out of your comfort zone. It is expanding your consciousness because also the more we know, the more we experience just the, the fuller we are as a human being. And I think one of the, one of the reasons we have such division and dis, disrest, that's not a word, unrest in this country right now is there's so many people that don't explore other cultures. They don't explore other points of view. They don't explore um, anything other than the restaurant that they go to every Friday night and they sit in the same booth and they order the same food. And I think once we get out of that and we go for something different that we're maybe not used to or maybe a little scary, I think our experience broadens and we expand our consciousness and it's easier to meditate. And it's easier to have that beginner's mind of, oh, huh, I'm thinking, that's interesting. All right, well, we'll come back to that. Yeah, it's easier to not think that a thought is bad. I I think I, what what I heard was courage. Getting out of the comfort zone is a lot of courage. And courage was uh, to quote, you know, we're, as we toss around quotes that we don't really know who they're from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, courage is not the absence of fear, but proceeding to act in spite of the fear. You can have fear, but you still go on forward. Um, and yeah, and just touching upon that social disrest. I, that's a new word I made. I made you know, word. I'm in the California bubble and it really, I feel that, you know, as a spiritual person, I feel that this non-dual perspective is so important. And oftentimes I hear, uh, liberals in my case, but I'm sure it's the other way around too. It seems like the other side in the political spectrum is all, they're all dumb. They're all dumb. And I'm like, you're calling 50% or whatever. You're calling a lot of people dumb. Like, you know, I feel like that's a part of the, this unrest too, is we can, t- we can tend to think things are good or bad. And yeah. it's, there's gray area. There's gray area. Well, and if we can get out of that thought form, if we can get out of the ego of thought, and we identify ourselves through thought. If we weren't thinking, our being kind of goes, wait, wait, who am I if I'm not thinking? This is what we're thinking all the time. That's how we identify ourselves. If we can step out of that need to be right, because <clears throat> you figure, I, I actually did a TEDx on us versus them. 
Uh, and you figure if you, if you get a, an auditorium full of people and you say, okay, everybody, we're going to play dodgeball. We're going to play boys versus girls. And everybody divides up. Well, now you've got your team and you've got your enemy. And then you get about two seconds into it and they go, oh, no, 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 no. You know what? Actually, we're going to do blue eyes versus brown eyes. Well, suddenly you've all reorganized and people a second ago that were your teammate are now your enemy. So this all totally depends. Okay, we're going to go brown hair, not brown hair. And yeah. Then can pick anything and we can make anybody the enemy. And it happens to be Republican, Democrat, liberal, um, uh, conservative, Christian, non-Christian. I mean, it's like you pick anything, but you have this crossover. We all know someone that has died of cancer. I think we're at a point in this world where we all know somebody. We all have a certain appreciation for music. We all have a certain appreciation for food. We all have a certain appreciation for football. We all have a certain, I mean, it's like, let's look at something that is similar. The yeah. Fact that we all have love in our hearts that we all are a, a, a son or daughter of somebody. You know, we can focus on that little part that's different, or we can focus on that part that's the same. Um, and that similarity and that, I mean, to try to weave it back to go for it, yeah. if we step out of our hometown, we can recognize those samenesses. Mm. Um, I had the privilege of traveling to the Middle East. No one, and I can't say no one, my dad was freaking out that I was going to go. Um, my then husband, now ex-husband was freaking out that I was going to go, you're going to die. You're going to get kidnapped. You're not coming back. It's dangerous. Why would you go to the Middle East? You're being dumb. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, why would I not do that thing? I had the opportunity to go. I went to Egypt. I went to Jordan. It was one of the most incredible journeys of my life. And mm. I pulled into the Jordan airport. And because of everything I'd seen on the news and everything everybody instilled in me about how scary it was going to be, I expected to see bombs going off in the distance <laughs> at the airport. I mean, like, I seriously, I looked out the window and thought, oh, here we go. We're dry, go heading into, oh, looks kind of like Burbank Airport. That's weird. And uh -huh. told totally Burbank. I was like, mm, that's weird. You know what everybody was doing? They were working. They were taking care of their kids. They were getting their kids off to school. They were buying their groceries. They were holding hands with their spouse. Mm. They were telling jokes. Mm. They were loving each other the same way we do here. Mm. And it's I like, love that. Can't everybody see this? Um, it, we're not all that different. Yeah. So go for it. Get out of your comfort zone and experience those things or else you don't realize that we have those similarities. Yeah. Get out, get out of your comfort zone. And that includes the challenging your thought patterns and in the sense of like, maybe your thought patterns are go, go, go. And when you start to pause, it feels weird a little bit, but if you can pause, then you can start to play. You can start to uh, take those leaps forward up the trapeze ladder. You can start to get a grounded base. You can start to de-stress. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, as we wrap up today, where can people reach you? Yeah. So the best place is I've got two sites, kathygroover.com. All my books are there. It's about my speaking and my background, all that good stuff. And then I have kathygroover.coach. If you want to want to come in and do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do life coaching, personal business, lots of relationship work, spirituality, that sort of thing. Um, and I'm all over social media and I love keeping in touch with people. So uh, let's connect. Cause that's awesome. And then I always ask people, what is their biggest enlightenment, their biggest shift in perspective oh god um if you can summarize it in a few words my biggest enlightenment um shift in perspective yes yeah, my biggest shift in perspective i think was just being present yeah i was gonna say i think we touched upon that a good amount so future paced that i never sat here for a second i didn't enjoy what i actually had i was like okay check that off know what's the next thing sit in what you have sit in where you are amen love it Thank you so much for coming on, Kathy. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me.